Hey Chicago, what do you say? This is the CHGO Cubs Podcast, presented by Blue Moon, made brighter. Get Blue Moon delivered and see delivery options by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash CHGO. Celebrate responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day, happy you're watching the Cubs while also watching us, I think. I don't know if they're on marquee or not. I don't think they're on marquee. I think okay, you're watching us while watching you're watching us. You're, wa- you're following MLB at Bad App while also watching us. There you go. Credit to everyone who's doing so. <laughs> uh, Cody Del Mendo, Ryan Herrera, and Jared Willis joining us from the press box in Arizona. Out in Goodyear. Out in Goodyear. Yeah, out in Goodyear today. <laughs> Uh, so we'll, we're, we got a lot to talk about. Before we get to it, want to shout out the new diehards, uh, Lauren, Jeremy, John, and William. I saw Lauren in the CH or in the Cubs Discord uh, channel last night, actually, on her way out to Arizona. Nice. I think next week. So uh, I hope she has a lot of fun. Uh, I see everyone in the chat: DFW, Susie, Becky. Wrigley Man 1. Barb, yes, we are live, of course. Um, Carter Hawkins, the real Carter Hawkins. Don't let the facts get in the way of a good story. Rachel, um, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Tell your friends, tell your friends' friends. Tell your family, tell your great aunts and uncles. Yeah, your neighbors. Yeah. Everyone. Um, Jared, you look incredibly well-rested, and I'm sure that's because you got to stay at the Gila River Resort and Casino last night. Bequiva. I sure did. Bequiva. And it was a, a beautiful night in a, a truly beautiful hotel. I love the location, by the way. The mountains all around oh, yeah. you. Um, I went for a little run this morning, kind of back in there a little ways, checking out all the, the, the cacti. Um, it's, a, it's a great spot. <laughs> did you hit the blackjack table? Because me and Ryan did so before we left. Wasn't a good night. It wasn't good for us, but maybe you have better luck. I'm gonna have to before I leave. I do have to say I, I turned in early last night after Tuesday was a long day with the travel and everything. But uh, at some point in the next few nights, it's gonna happen for sure. There you go. There you go. All right. So uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, I guess we should start with uh, Jamison Tyone. Going to open up. I think Craig Council basically announced it yesterday, Jared, that Tyone's at least going to miss one start. Um, can you, I guess, go more in depth on that to make sure I'm right here? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, it, it won't really be official until until the opening day roster is actually set. But it's it's one of those things where we all know that that's what's going to happen um, because what Council spoke to yesterday was. Even if Tyon is able to start throwing again here soon, he's going to need more like, like ramp up time, more prep time. Um, you can't necessarily have him just jump right back into the swing of things, given you know what's happened for him this spring so far. So with the timing of it, is they can backdate the, the start date for the, him going on the IL to I think it's March 25th. Um, but with pitchers, it's a 15-day IL. So the way the timing works out is there's there's multiple turns through the rotation there. Um, so you're looking at probably at least two starts that he's going to miss, um, and potentially more if they feel like when he is ready to come back, if they want him to make a, a minor league rehab start in April somewhere. Um, so that, of course, means that what used to be a one rotation spot that these guys were fighting for now it's now it's really two at least temporarily so but yeah that's the the status on tyon the last uh, when we spoke to council this morning said the tyon um is like 
not quite like playing catch yet. So they're really kind of taking things slow because he said they really don't want to rush him now and just risk causing problems down the road. Take it slow now at the beginning of the season in hopes that you can ensure that when he does come back, he is fully ready to return. Yeah. How do you think the off days, they have three off days within the first two, I think 15 days of the season. Um, how do you think, cause we saw them play with, with some off days and, and moving the ro- or shuffling things in the rotation last year. Um, how do you think they could use those off days as far as, you know, obviously Tyone's going to have to miss the 12 days or whatever it is to start the year, but allowing it to, to get to a point where he doesn't have to miss more starts than absolutely necessary based on that timeline. How do you, how do you feel like they could kind of shuffle those things around? Well, that definitely is something that can help to minimize the amount of time or the number of starts the tie-on has to miss. But another factor in there is council has talked about, at least early on, wanting to try to give Imanaga some of those extra days between his starts. So if not for that, I think, you know, you could really look at this working to Tyon's advantage, but with the Imanaga factor in there as well, I think that's why they are really treating this as we expect he's going to miss at least two starts, possibly more, because um, they want to give Imanaga those extra days. Not that they're going to go that way throughout the season or even that deep into the season, but at least at first, it sounds very much like that's the that's going to be the approach for Shota. Um, yeah, I'm. I guess I'm a little. I'm pretty optimistic about Tyone mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, when you sent the tweet last night that he'll at least miss one star, it's kind of feel like that's kind of what my vibe has been on this. Cause again, it's not an arm injury. It's just lower back tightness. So I guess the only thing for me that honestly sucks is that this just feels like another one of those, like another, uh, you know, thing of adversity that Tyone has had to face since becoming a cub. And, you know, obviously the first half of last season wasn't great for him was bad against lefties, gave up a ton of homers, and but got better in the second half of the season for the most part. And I was optimistic about him coming into this year. And, again, the the good news is, is that it's not an arm injury, but starting the season on the injured list, I, I hope this back issue doesn't become a lingering thing as we saw with, like, Anthony Rizzo. Uh, you know, it's different for Tyone since he's not going to play every single day, but it is something that, like – I've had back issues before too. Like it, it lingers, man. Yeah, so my like, back I, is terrible. I could see him missing that one start and coming back and being fine, but I could also see it being something that we're talking about all season. And so, I'm, I don't feel great. That's that's where I'm at. But I'm optimistic that things can get back on track. And I guess at the end of the day, it's good news that they have some r- solid depth. I, it has it's a lot of depth that has a lot to prove still, but. I think a lot of fans feel good about some of the guys that they have that can step in for a few stars. Well, and that, and two things with that. I mean, number one, I think that is why council said we're, they're really purposely taking things slow now because what they're trying to avoid is exactly Cody, what you said, where let's get him back. But then a few starts later, this problem has popped up again. So you, you work to avoid that. And I do think it also helps number two that, you had four guys competing for one rotation spot, and then now you got four guys kind of in a way competing for two. So there is some depth there. I know not all four of those guys are like premium options necessarily, but you know we talked a little bit yesterday too about Assad and kind of liking him in a little bit of a different role. But you could do a lot worse than having those guys as your options for some of those spots, at least in April. So. Um, but yeah, it is kind of frustrating at the end of the day because I think many of us felt like this was the Jamison Tyon bounce back year, or at least that's what you're kind of hoping for. Um, and I know Ryan wrote a few weeks back about Tyon coming into camp, feeling refreshed, ready to start, you know, start over this year. And then it feels like, gosh, all right, well, here we are. So you, you do hope this doesn't turn into something long term. Yeah. Um, another player we continue to kind of monitor is uh, Christopher Morrell at third base. Um, had a couple of nice plays there last night against the Brewers. Also had a throwing error. Um, you know, you've gotten maybe you've gotten to see him a little bit more up close the last couple of days, just, or yesterday, just being out there. 
um, if he was taking reps or not. But um, what did you see from him last night and, and just kind of your thoughts and anything that Craig Council may have said about uh, just the continued sort of experiment or development of Morel over at third base? Yeah, I mean, we saw the, the two really impressive plays last night, charging toward the ball, fielding it cleanly, and then making really strong, accurate throws to first, but then later on in the game, uh, the throwing error, where still you're seeing the strength of his arm in that throw, but then when the accuracy accuracy isn't there, that's where he runs into trouble. Um, he was this morning, they were doing some infield work, and he was there at third, taking quite a few reps on, you know, fielding grounders, making those throws over to third base. Um, and same kind of thing in those drills. Um, a lot of throws that look really good, but then also a couple where, you know, whoever was at first is having to do a little moving around to go for those balls. So they're putting the time in to help him get those reps. I mean, he's, he's, he's logging those hours um, in the mornings before these afternoon games, you know, saw it again, saw it today. And, Craig Council talked a little bit about this morning about, you know, don't look for him to be like a finished product at third base on March 28th. The, the growth is going to have to continue to happen. But very much like the plan is, he's likely going to be your not necessarily full time first bit third baseman, but pretty close to it. So he's that's where he's going to be. He's getting the reps in now in spring. Um, and you will see where he's got to continue to develop and grow during the course of the season as well. So get used to maybe games like last night is a really good preview of what's to come. He's going to make some really great plays, but then he's probably good for an error here and there as well. I'm, I'm curious to your thoughts on who could be that. If, if Madrigal isn't healthy, ready to go by opening day, who is the backup? Who's the who's the guy that they would play outside of Morel? I know Wisdom ha obviously has experience at third, but I I know I think they'd rather play him at first personally if they if they did play him in the field. Uh, Master Boney has experience at third base, and then after that, it's you know I know everyone is excited about Matt Shaw, but Matt Shaw is not going to make the opening day roster. He's a guy that down the road could be at third base for sure, right? So. For you right now, where where do you who do you think is that other guy if Madrigal is not ready opening day? I do think it's going to be Master Boney because he can back you up at third, but he also can serve as a a backup at shortstop, you know, second base. Like he's got the versatility in the infield where they can use him in multiple spots, and that's got a lot of value. Um, so I think he's he's the guy behind Morrell. And then if you've got wisdom on the roster as well, you know he can pick up a start at third if need be. And Matt Shaw, for as, as good as the potential looks, I think when the time comes when he gets called up, I don't know that you want to call him up to make him your third third guy on the depth chart. So you're right, Cody. I think that's why, you know, for fans who are excited to see him and with good reason, that's why you're you're not going to see him right out of the gate. That might be something that comes later on. So yeah, it's for me. It's Morel, Mastroboni, uh, Wisdom. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think I, I asked that question to kind of emphasize again, like because I, I think a lot of fans, especially, and I'm basing this off social media, <laughs> and so that's like ten percent of like anyone really. Um, I think a lot of fans are already overriding this roller coaster that is Christopher Morrell playing third base, and it's just like, who would you rather see over there? Who like, if if you remove, if you put Morrell back at DH, that's going to remove opportunities for other guys to get at bats. Someone in the chat was mentioning Garrett Cooper, Dom Smith. I know they're minor league signings, and who knows if one of them will even make it on the roster, but. They have impressed this spring, right? Then you, yeah, I mentioned wisdom. I mentioned, uh, you know, Alexander Canario. That's one guy I didn't mention, but what about him? Like they have guys that are going to miss out it, on at bats if Morell, if if he's not playing third base, you know. And so that's why I asked the question because I think for me at least, I'd rather ride this roller coaster of him up and down at third base with hopefully improvements as the season moves along, then I don't know, like 
go with this platoon, I guess. I I think the more consistency, the more he's that third base consistently, the better it w- will be or get the situation. Obviously, guys need off days, but that I think that just – I feel like that will be a better situation for Morel in general. I agree. I think that's – both offensively and defensively, I think that's the best situation for him and really for the team. Give him those regular looks um, at third base and the regular looks to the lineup because for for fans who might feel a little bit like unsure of how it's going to look having him out there defensively every day, I, I believe the advantage of having his bat in the lineup on a consistent basis is, is gonna, going to make up for that. Um, and so – for that, I, I'm I'm very much in favor of you play Morel maybe eighty percent of your starts. You you keep him out there and let him get those reps. Yeah. yeah. The only reason I push back a little bit on like assuming it'll get better is because we know like the a, a large majority of his minor league innings and playing time came at third base. And we're still sitting here now, years later, where it's like, oh, this guy's got to develop into a third baseman. So like, I'm not 100% convinced it will get, like, vastly better. I do think that, like you guys are saying, continuing to um, just get reps and getting that muscle memory will help as far as the the timing things, which we talked about, as far as, um, you know, uh, the transferring the baseball from the glove to the, to the hand to getting the throw off, your footwork, all that kind of stuff. I do think... Um, he can improve in those smaller areas, which will help. They'll definitely help you be a better third baseman. They'll help you make sure runners aren't beating you, uh, aren't beating the ball out to first base. Like those things will help. But I do think what Jared had mentioned of, uh, you know, making some really awesome plays, but then having a some errors every so often. I do think, you know, I think you might still see that for a while, and so I think you'll have to, as as long, obviously as long as the bat is offsetting it in a positive way. Like, you have to learn to deal with it. Again, I, I do think the smaller things, keeping hits off the board, uh, he'll get better at. But I think I – don't, I don't know how quick we'll start to see, you know, and errors come down, right? Like, it's hard to, like, measure that. But um, I, I, do, I do think some of those bigger things that you see on the, on the box scores and stuff uh, might take a little bit longer for that – for us to see, like, real improvements in that. But it, it is on him, too. Like, yeah. he could surprise us and – you know, there's different things that, that again, th- even different smaller things that I noticed when I was out there um, that I've been kind of looking out for and I, I really want to see. And I do think he can improve on those things as well, though. I guess at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, like, first off, who all makes the opening day roster for the Cubs? If, you know, if we've talked about Canario. Canario could go – he could start the year in AAA, right? Um, if – if the roster, if the opening day roster is set at a point to where you're not taking away at bats for certain guys because Morell's in the DH, then I can get more on board with seeing a combination of Master Boney or Madrigal whenever he's back um, playing third base. I just don't want. I personally just don't want. Some of these other, some of these guys to miss out on at bats when they just they're questions. Like we we don't know what Alexander Canario is. I personally like how many more minor league at bats does he need? I, I don't know. I know him missing a lot of last year is a big reason why it might be smart to send him to to Iowa first. Um, you know, like there there's a list of dudes, right? But I think as long as he's not necessarily keeping guys from getting at least some sort of consistency out there in the field, or at least at bats, then I could probably be a a little bit more on board with some sort of platoon, I guess, at third base. It just depends on who they're going to put on that 26 man. Right. So, well, and you mentioned Canario. um, So I want to spin that a little bit to um, Ian Happ and updates we've gotten on him as far as his potential availability for opening day. What, what have you heard so far um, with Happ? with half status uh, as far as, you know, obviously if he's going to be ready to go by opening day. Well, I, I mean, I have some good news on that front because Craig Council's words this morning were he is on track for opening day. Um, that's not a guarantee that he'll be ready uh, for opening day, but he's, yeah, quote, Ian's on track for opening day. 
Um, Cause he's been asked and I asked him about this yesterday about having say a Suzuki make some starts in left field. And he said, that's not, you know, that's not about them prepping for not having Ian Happ. Um, it's really about like possible scenarios in the future where he might be needed there and he's not played and left a whole lot. So let's give him some looks in spring training. That's all it is. Um, and I did see yesterday that Ian Happ was out taking batting practice, um, saw him doing some throwing and some other drills. So he's, he's doing quite a few baseball activities. Um, so, you know, it, it's, he's, he's looking pretty good. Um, so I think, yeah, I think it's, it's fair at this point or safe at this point to expect that Ian Happ will be on the opening day roster. I mean, we don't, that is gonna change the outfield picture which then might have an impact on some of these guys who are questions for other spots on the roster. Yeah, because yeah, I, I bring that up with Canario because, say, Hab is not available to start the season, that gives Canario a little bit more of a, sure. an opening to make the opening day roster and to have a B, especially as left field, could be open for him. With Hab back, I think that mm-hmm. limits – just limits the chance that he can make the opening day roster. Not saying that he won't, because obviously the DH spot still exists and that's a potential role for him. But um, yeah, having no hap would mean a little bit more of an opening for Canario to potentially make the roster. But obviously, hap we talk about is an all-star, a two-time Gold Glover. Like that's the that's the guy you want in your lineup right now yeah. to start the year for the Cubs. I love this news because. I think Ian Happ is your opening day leadoff man. I love the idea of Ian Happ leading off for this team in 2024 with Seiya Suzuki or Cody Bellinger behind him uh, in that two hole. Um, Or, you know, if they put Seiya, then Bellinger in the three hole. I love that idea. Um, So it's good to see you. Any idea on when he might be able to get back into some games at all, Jared? Council didn't speak to that. Um, So. Yeah, it, it may still be a little while before you see him back out there and maybe potentially even fairly close to to opening day. Um, but like I said, he's he's keeping pretty busy, so he, he's not carrying himself like a guy who's who's injured right now, um, or at least, you know, significantly injured. So I, I'm with you. I kind of like the idea of him as your leadoff guy. He, yeah, switch hitter, nice. consistently gives you quality at-bats veteran um so yeah it's the best case scenario for the cubs is ian haps under opening day roster uh speaking of guys for opening day justin Steele, our opening day starter he's had nine strikeouts last night um jared i'm not someone who takes results very seriously in spring training uh but i i can't sit here and ignore nine strikeouts against milwaukee in what four innings last night um i know you talked to him uh, we put that video up on our Instagram, and uh, we retweeted it on our Twitter account as well. But what uh, what are your thoughts on Justin Steele's uh, performance last night? I mean, he he really looked dominant, and and like you, it's you you kind of take it all like you said, you take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. It's spring training, but you can tell, you know, when a guy has his good stuff, um, and Justin Steele had his good stuff last night when. When I saw him, he, he gave up the leadoff double in the first inning and then struck out the next three guys in a row. Um, that's, you know, that's the kind of thing that you see him do in July. So, and he even said after the after his start was over, he said, his words were, I felt like I was in midseason form. Um, and, but then, and really encouragingly, he spoke to how good he felt like the pitches were coming up out of his hands. So getting the results, but he also felt good about like the process, so to speak. Um, and he mentioned the slider specifically. I think you can you can hear him say that in the video that that we posted, um, feeling like the slider was coming off his fingers really nicely. So um, you know, when you hear a guy talk like that in the middle of March, that's that's reason to feel really good. So um, Justin Steele, opening day, it's going to be something. Yeah. yeah. Um, one more thing, uh, Miguel Amaya, Grand Slam today. Uh, how did that look? It's uh, so I, 
I think we had five straight hits from the Cubs in the first inning. But yeah, you got Amaya's first grand slam. Uh, real nice, solid contacts, pretty high up in the air. One that kind of floated a little bit. You know, not too deep necessarily, but. Um, in the Goodyear press box, it's actually really hard to see down the right field line because okay. um, it's blocked. But <laughs> and by blocked, I mean you can't see it at all. So, um, but yeah, sounded really great off the bat and just kept carrying. So, uh, speaking of guys who are looking like they're in midseason form, you got Miguel Amaya and Grant Slams at Goodyear. Great. That's well, awesome to hear because he is a big like he's I, he's one of Ryan's like big was, steps forward guys. My, when we we did our make who's making a leap this year yeah. picks that yeah. was my guys with Galamayas. Yeah. I think he's I think he's in in store for a, a bigger year for uh, for the Cubs and. Well, Amaya hits the grand slam today. Jan Gomes had one of those flare RBI singles in the clutch, which we saw a lot of last year. Last night, um, listen if if. If gas money gives us another solid offensive season on top of being what he is as a defensive catcher and Amaya breaks out like Ryan predicts, we're going to feel really good about the catcher position, that's for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. We'll see. Um, all right, Jared. Well, I'd tell you to, you know, stay stay cool out there, but uh, you look really comfortable anyway, man. <laughs> so, well, it's, I'm, I'm feeling good down here in Arizona. It's, it's, uh, High 70s, the sun is out, but I look in, and again, the second day in a row, Cody, you got the shorts on. So, oh, yeah. you know, it's just a beautiful brought the day Arizona here. weather back with you. Yeah. 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 yeah it's it's beautiful bad. here. Uh, before Jared heads out, just want to remind everyone CHGO Spring Training Hotel accommodations are provided by our friends at the Gila River Resort and Casino V. Cueva. Jared's there right now. Cody and I both stayed there uh, when we were down in Arizona. Great place to stay the place for Chicago baseball fans to stay when visiting the Phoenix area. So if you are planning to head west to watch Cactus League games or you're just traveling to the desert throughout the year, call 1-800-946-4452 or visit play at gila.com. Gila River Resort and Casino Viquiva. Great spot. Absolutely great spot. Uh, Jared, I believe in you. You're going to do better at the blackjack table than me and Ryan. <laughs> Well, I appreciate it. I'll let you guys know how it turns out. All Sounds right. Good. Well, we'll see you tomorrow uh, with more updates. Yep. All right. Sounds good. See you guys tomorrow. All right. Thanks, That's Jared. It's Jared Willis. You can follow him on Twitter at J – or is it J Willis? At J Willis. With two Ys. Two Ys instead of I's and Willis. Yeah. He's out there covering the Cubs spring training action for us right now. Uh, people, A lot of people out in Arizona, perhaps Jared, you know, I, one might say, you know, they, they might need a car. But if you're here in Chicago, you also might need a car. Uh, if you're in the market for a new vehicle, <laughs> if you are, then we have some great news for you. Our partner, Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram in Fox Lake, is celebrating the President's Day sales event all month long. And you know that what that means. You'll be able to shop presidential savings on their wide selection of inventory for a limited time. Get 20 percent off msrp on, on all remaining new 2023 jeep gladiator models with a dealer discount they're number one for new vehicle quality among mid-sized trucks says jd power and that's not all shop their last call on select dodge challenger and charger models dodge is the most powerful muscle car so you can so you don't want to miss out on their last call with over 20 Dodge muscle cars to choose from at Ray CDJR you'll always be able to shop one of Chicago Land's largest inventories and drive home with more money in your pocket than you'd expect thanks to Ray's price promise don't miss out shop great deals all month long and save big because Ray CDJR makes buying a new vehicle more affordable than ever that's not all just for listening. You can get a free oil change when you mention CHGO at service at the center, service center or mention CHGO when you book online at Ray CDJR slash service. But you have to schedule before the end of the month. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, then you have to check out the team at Ray Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram because they are the only team we recommend. Visit them today on Route 12 in Fox Lake. For more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com, serving the community since 1963. And I think this ad needs to be updated. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, 
I said President's Day. It probably should say St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So, uh, sorry. Yeah. But, again, it, it remains. Fact remains. You can get it for a free go. oil change, folks. All right? Um, yeah. But uh, Barb <laughs> in the chat said, uh, if I can bring Stucky some soup, um, no, but I would love to bring him some Blue Moon. I'm sure he would love if I brought him some Blue Moon. Hell, yeah. I mean, listen. Blue Moon has been changing my life ever since they became our, our new presenting sponsor. Blue Moon, they gave me a baseball jersey. Yeah. They gave me some new cups that I have at home that I've been drinking out of. Um, and they've made, like, Blue Moon has just made my life better. I wake up, Blue Moon. I go to the gym, come home, Blue Moon for lunch, Blue Moon for dinner. I dream about Blue Moon. This is what I do. All right. Yeah, absolutely. You laugh, but I'm no, just. No, well, we got a fridge. We got a fridge stocked with Blue Moon. Absolutely. I don't have one on me right now, but I'm going to crack one right after <laughs> before we get to our ping pong game. Oh, the, yeah. the, 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 the off season series yeah, that we haven't talked about enough. We haven't on talked this about show. enough. I'm sure we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll bring it up when it gets closer to opening day. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, Blue Moon, Made Brighter, get Blue Moon delivered and see delivery options by visiting get.bluemoonbeer.com slash chgo. Celebrate responsibly, Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Hell yeah, brother. Love that. All right. Um, let's read some chats. Uh, we have 16 likes, likes at the current moment. Uh, please hit the like button. We need more. We need more. Uh, Barb, I don't have a drinking problem. I just like Blue Moon. I, have, I, I really do like Blue Moon. All yeah, right? it's, not, it's not a problem. Yeah. Um, let's see. There was one chat in here. We were talking about morel that kind of caught my eye. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think it was from Wrigley man one. Uh, I wish they would bring in someone to work with morel at third, <laughs> like Aramis Ramirez. <laughs> well, some people like when, when you think about Aramis Ramirez, I don't think people think about his defense, but I, he was, he was serviceable over there. Right. Which is what, what all you need. That's uh, all you Morrell really need Morel right? to do, right? So, I don't um, know. I, I, it's a, I think with his situation, it's just very. It's just reps. It's, it's, yeah. what, it's right, what Craig Council has talked about, just, just continuing to get him reps, reps on reps on reps. Um, and just seeing, you know, I, I think a lot of it is just considering the amount he's moved around the last few years. Um, you know, getting maybe getting a little bit of that muscle memory, like I mentioned, just mm -hmm. just knowing the positioning, knowing um, you know how how long it takes a guy to get from home plate to first, and how much time you have to throw, right? Sure. Um, how to set your feet, whether to come in on a ball or to stay back on it, all that kind of stuff. Um, you, you definitely get more comfortable with all that stuff the more reps you take. So, um, again, I, I don't know that we're ever going to see Morel become a. I, I would be surprised if he ever becomes a gold glove third baseman, right. you know, um, and, and serviceable, like we said, like considering the bat, serviceable is good enough. Mm. Like it, that's, that's great for the Cubs if, if he becomes a serviceable guy you're comfortable with every day at third base. Um, and he can get there. I think a lot of it just has to do with um, mm -hmm. just continuing to get reps, yeah. just going out there, playing every day, whether that's starting games, um, you know, playing platooning or whatever, uh, obviously, they still have a couple more weeks of springs. So he's going to be in there a lot, I assume. But then uh, just in, on the in-betweens, right? Yeah. Um, you see uh, before regular season games, guys are out there, Nico Horn or Dan's, like whoever it is, they're out there all the time getting pregame work in. And if that's that's somewhere I expect to see Morrell um, out there a lot at third base, getting work in with, mm -hmm. with Jonathan Moda and, and whoever else is working with the infielders that day. Mm -hmm. um, just continuing to get work in out there because that, all that stuff is going to help him um, just develop, just um, improve at that position, especially on those little things that in some ways requires a little bit of muscle memory and comfortability. Um, I think that's that's going to help. Yeah. Now, I, I think it it's definitely something fans are definitely going to be looking at, like, all season. And I, I don't I, – I, I feel like if I don't say this, that, like, I'm just ignoring an obvious, but I'm sure at some point he will have a defensive play that – Lead that is either because the Cubs win or because the Cubs lose. I'm 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 pretty certain that that will happen. All right, um, so that can be in one of two ways, right? Like if you know if he has a really great defensive play and and it helps them win the game, 
we'll be celebrating it. And if and if he doesn't, they you know we'll be sitting here asking, is Shaw ready? Or <laughs> you know put Magical in at third, which is like, and I don't care how many mistakes he plays at third. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm not going to be asking for that. So um, anyway, I, it I think I bring it back up just because it's been one of the more polarizing topics in Cubs spring training for sure. So we'll see. Uh, I guess some other news that came out today, Garrett Cole could be out for a month or two UCL injury. So just add him to the list of more starting pitchers who are hurt. Um, I think the, I, I hear the, the White Sox and the Yankees are talking trade for Dylan Cease, um, which is so crazy that they'd rather do that than just give Blake Snell the money or Jordan Montgomery the money to come back. Um, those two still out there. I'm supp- I, at this point with all the injuries we've seen for pitchers. I'm I'm like, what is Scott Boris doing, man? Like, I I don't I don't get it. I it's it's March 13th. He wants man. to get those guys big contracts. I get that, but like, like I, I don't in know. In a man. way, it's, it's like crazy. you know, Bellinger is a MVP ceiling type guy, and getting him the contract that he got. He's 28, going to be 20. He'll be 29 when he were, you know, to potentially hit free agency again later this year. It's not like he's going to be – it's not like he's in his in his late 30s or mid 30s or early, even early 30s looking for that last contract necessarily. Mm-hmm. Like this contract still allows him to go out and get one last big contract mm-hmm. for, for Bellinger. So these other guys, that, you know, it may not be that simple, for especially for pitchers, for sure. Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery. Well, so. I guess it definitely in- intensifies why pitchers are paid so much more money than position players in some aspects, especially starting pitchers, uh, because if you're healthy and you can provide a team 30 starts, that's value. There's some guys that struggle with that, <laughs> right? So uh, yeah, I uh, I don't know, man. I, I'm pretty much – I'm pretty – like I said the other day, I'm, I'm still pretty – Certain, well, maybe not certain. I, I don't have any sources, but I've come to the fact that I don't think the Cubs are going to sign Montgomery. I, I'm also come to the, like, I've accepted the fact that, like, it's okay if they don't. Um, I know a lot of people are don't feel that way. Um, I guess I'm zigging while everyone else is zagging, but that's just me. Uh, I, I get why fans want the Cubs to get him, but I, I, don't, I don't think – I don't think the Cub, I, I feel like with the Cubs rotation right now, and you're seeing a lot of these injuries. I think there's value in the fact that they have guys that are yep. that have the ability to go out there and give you five to six innings every single day. Yeah. Some guys can go further, like Steele. We've seen it plenty last year, right? And uh, obviously, there's a lot of uns- like I guess uncertainty in terms of you know a lot of them haven't proved a ton. Like Imanaga hasn't proved anything yeah. here, right? And Tyone, once he comes back, will he bounce back from last year? And, you know, Hendricks is probably the only one that we have some certainty on, right? Like, <laughs> just going to be Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, he is who he is, right? And he's solid. He helps, he's helped the Cubs win a lot yeah. of games over the course of time, right? Well, so, yeah. I, well, I, I guess that's my big thing that I take away from like all these pitcher injuries is I, I feel like no matter what, the Cubs have enough, like they have guys that you feel like can go out there and help you win. They ain't going to go yeah. out there and win a game for you. Maybe Steele can do that more than anyone else, but they have, they're healthy, like for the most part, right? And they have solid depth. But like one, one name that I didn't mention when we were talking about, um, what's his name? Tyone. When it comes to like depth, and of course he's not going to be out. He's going. He's not in the race for this to get one of these spots or to get one of these starts or spot starts, whatever. While Tyone is out, but like Ben Brown, who you tell me earlier today that there was an article about him on Fangraphs, um, talking about him. But he's a guy that at some point this season I could see being used in the yeah. role of Hayden Wisniewski, Javier Assad, um you know, Drew Smiley, something like that, because they've used him as a starter. They've used him as a bullpen arm. I think that I think that's what they've used used him for in, in the minors since he's came to the Cubs. Yeah. Well, so, well, you had mentioned um, to end the Montgomery thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think if Tyone were to be out, like, until the All-Star break, right, or a longer-term maybe things injury, would be yeah. maybe they would be more inclined to go out and, and, yeah. and get one of those guys. More specifically, I would lean probably Jordan Montgomery. Um, but because we know, or what we're, what we're hearing right now is that Tyone's is not going to be 
that serious. It may only be a minimum stint on the IL, a couple turns to the rotation. Yeah. Um, At least one start, Yeah, one, according uh, to Craig Council. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, it feels like it's going to be, like, j- that doesn't change their plans as far as what they want to do with the rotation, the pitching staff. But, yeah, Ben Brown is someone that we've never, not that we've never mentioned him, but it's, he's not someone we talk about as much as the guys like Wisniewski, Smiley, mm-hmm. Assad, and Wicks, right? Just yeah. because – Kate um, Horton. Yeah, yeah even Kate Horton, right? We yeah. talked about him the other day. Yeah. Um, but, like, Ben Brown is, is right there. Like, he was, uh, you know, obviously traded for – or David acquired Robertson. for David Robertson mm-hmm. uh, from the Phillies. And, the, I mean, he was – he immediately became one of the Cubs' top prospects then. And I think the last um, MLB pipeline update, he's number 11. Mm-hmm. Part of that, I think, is to do with the end of the season. And, obviously, with some other guys just continuing to develop at a pretty high level. But also the uh, – Ben Brown's season and I you know I had a conversation with him actually during spring training when I was down there and uh just kind of reflecting on the season and part of it was you know he had that uh he had that oblique injury a uh, left oblique strain I believe is how he termed it uh, but he had that and then went into you know missed a month of the season and came back and um pitched out of the bullpen and it wasn't because it wasn't because they were looking to use him as a reliever. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if that's what, what you were getting at, but um, it was more just by the time he was able to come back, there just wasn't – it was either it wasn't going to be enough time for him to really uh, build back up into starting, mm-hmm. into starting pitching. So the way for him to get back sooner and to pitch a few times by the end of the season – was to just come out of the bullpen, pitch a few innings um, every few games or so, um, just to try to get back into into things. And and he struggled too. Like he he kind of struggled um, a few games into getting promoted to Iowa. That was when you just start to see that ERA go up. Um, and then I, Iowa was a little bit of a struggle for him. And then he got uh, hurt. And then even pitching out of the bullpen, he didn't have um, a great September. So uh, it's. Rich mentions in the in the chat that a friend talking. Rich, great friend Rich, he also said that he met Jared yesterday at the game, so that's mm-hmm. cool. That is cool. Um, but that Ben Brown probably would have debuted in twenty twenty three if he hadn't been hurt. Um, I think I think that's part true at least for sure because that did take a month from him. I want to say he missed all of August. Yeah, he missed all of August and a couple of days into September uh, with the injury. But there were some struggles prior to that. The the in June and July, so. I do think he probably would have debuted at some point, especially mm-hmm. if you're talking about um, some of that pitching, some pitching help at the end of the season, considering he was on the 40-man roster. Uh, it's possible. And that, so the injury definitely pretty much affected that. And I, I asked him about it, and he was like um, that, it, that it did crush him, the, the injury. Like, like not that he, that he likes rehabbing and stuff. Like he likes the process of getting healthy is kind of what he said, um, and it doesn't scare him. But – it, that it kind of crushed him knowing where he was kind of headed, his trajectory, um, and that he put a lot of pressure on himself to come back better than he was. Um, and it was just too much at the time. He struggled um, because there was so much emotional and physical stress on his body um, that just when he came back, yeah, again, just, just maybe putting a little bit too much pressure on himself is what he said. Um, so he was able to come back, came back pitching out of the bullpen, Again, just as a way to, to let, allow him to pitch and not have to miss too much more time um, and not have to worry about building back up to starting. So um, all that is to say uh, it was a it was a obviously tough second half of the season for Ben Brown last year, knowing where he was. And we we're like sitting here. We were sitting here a year ago. Like, yeah, Ben Brown is absolutely a part of this pitching depth. Probably going to make his debut this year. We're sitting here a year's late, a year later. And um, that didn't happen, and we're kind of sitting here in the same spot. Like, yeah, he can debut this year, but when when will that happen? Um, but he is someone that, when you're talking about pitching depth, starting pitching depth especially, he's he's definitely on the radar for sure. Yeah, no, I I just think that I think that he can be one of those like Swiss Army knife. Is that what we're called? Is that what they're called? As far as you think he can move back and forth? Yeah, like an Assad type. Yeah. Sure, but I don't know that that's what they plan on having him doing. Is is what I'm is, is kind of what I was getting at. Again, that I, him pitching out of the bullpen last year was mm-hmm. so that he could pitch versus right. versus having to miss more I time mean, to build back up. Not, I guess you know 
injuries happen, baseball going to baseball, like some, you know, things always find a way to play itself out. I just, I'm curious, you know, if he starts the season hot in Iowa and is pitching well and, you know, there's a guy in the Cubs bullpen or, you know, maybe it's, maybe it is the rotation and they're struggling and let's, you know, I guess if it's the starting rotation, we're talking about Jordan Wicks uh, because obviously Steele, Imanaga, Hendricks, and Tyone, when he's back, um, you know, those guys can't just be sent to Iowa. I think, I guess Steele technically could, I think. But I, I, you correct me if I'm wrong on that. But uh, I guess w- what I'm saying is that um, a guy like Ben Brown, like, I just don't know. Unless they use him, you know, for spot starts. You want to give guys some rest, kind of like how oh. Council did in M- Milwaukee. Then, then that'd be great. I would, I'd love, I'm, I'm, I'd honestly love to see him in a starting war, role more than in the bullpen. I just, you know, they have a lot of guys that, that that can do that, you know. So I feel like he's more so going to be used in, you know, that Wesneski, Assad, Drew Smiley role. But I, I don't know. But either way, like he's a, he's probably a name we should probably talk about a little bit more. So got some, uh, oh, yeah, got some thoughts about Ben Brown in the chat. A lot. It's like some good, some bad. I just think that if you're looking at just the stats, like Ryan said, he kind of struggled at the end of last year uh, because of yeah, – An injury definitely the, played a part the, in that. The injury and everything. So yeah, He also talked about um, you know, taking accountability and going back and looking at what also led um, to some of his issues last season. And, and he was talking about you know mechanical deficiencies, uh, some, some physical stuff and like lower half – lower half pitch usage type stuff um, that was contributing to it. So it was a lot of this offseason obviously reflecting on that, taking accountability for that and going in and just going through the process of attacking those deficiencies, making them better and getting back to the guy that, you know, we obviously saw in, when they traded for him in 2022 and then even the first uh, few months of 2023. Yeah, the guy that we saw that, again, we were sitting here like, yeah, this guy's about ready for the big leagues at some point last year and mm. didn't happen, but I think he's still in that spot where it could very well happen this year. Sure. Should happen this year. Honestly, I'll go, I'd go as far as to say that it should happen um, this season for him. I think he's, he's right there on the cusp of, of getting there. Awesome. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, you know, what's uh, some of the, the best things that you can use right coming in this summer, a, a new or perhaps your current, uh, dry cleaner. All right. If oh, you've yeah. been listening to the show, you, you might know about them. CD one price cleaners. All right. They, uh, they have a lot of great things about them. The low prices, their simple and transparent service, their fast turnaround. You can get text alerts from them, right? Uh, the low, the low prices customers save over 30% of their dry cleaning bill by switching to CD one price cleaners. All right. Other cleaners charge a different price for every garment type, plus they have upcharges, and you may pay a different price each time you visit. As CD One Price Cleaners, they charge a one low price for any garment. Yep, even sports jerseys, guys. Even your Cubs jersey, all right? The same one low price. Uh, their fast turnaround is something special as well. They'll have your order ready the same or next day. Other cleaners take two to four days to have your clean garments ready. And again, text alerts, it's so much better than getting an email. My email is flooded. I don't know about yeah. you, but my email is flooded with, you know, all kinds of crap, whether it's <laughs> junk mail, whether it's my bosses telling me I need to do this or do that, whether it's Ryan sending me emails about, yeah. you know, whatever related yeah. to the Cubs, right? Yeah, telling you to fix your spelling mistakes. Yeah, yeah, That's all my right. typos, yeah. like all of it, all right? So one less email from CD1 price cleaners is, is nice. They'll send it they'll send you a text instead, all right? Love that. They got a wide variety of services, obviously dry cleaning, the wash and f- they wash and fold laundry, blankets and comforters, tailoring and alterations, leather cleaning. They even will clean your rug, all right? Area, I got a rug. I need a area cl- rug clean. I need I need to get my rug clean <laughs> on my, in my apartment right now. Um, visit cho.cd1.com. Once you're there, you can visit from an in-store. You can pick from an in-store coupon or online pickup and delivery coupon options. There you go. Visit chgocd1.com. The link is in the description. All right? Don't miss out. 
Don't miss out. Don't miss out at all. You don't want to miss out on that, and you don't want to miss out on becoming a diehard. All right? Becoming a diehard is the greatest decision that you will make this year. I promise you. Yeah. All right. One, because we're going straight to the moon. If you're talking about CHGO, we're going to the moon. You want to be here when we get to the moon. All right. And uh, when when we get to the moon, when you when we get to the moon, you'll be able uh, to say that you were a diehard. And some of the benefits of becoming a diehard is 20 percent off merch events. The discord, the discord has been lit the last couple of days. Um, I, I got to say, I was in there cracking up last night. Uh from everyone's conversations. I enjoy watching or I enjoy reading about people talking about the Cubs. All right. Yeah, no, the Discord, the Cubs Discord is, you know, I'm, I'm not popping in there every day or, or throughout a day, but when I do hop in there, it's nice to have chats. We, you know, a lot of our diehards are in the chat right now. DFW, yeah. Susie, mm-hmm. Wrigley, is it Wrigley Man 1? Wrigley Man 1's yeah, uh, 1. We got, a, we got a bunch of people uh, that are also yeah. diehards. And, exactly. You know, that's where you mentioned becoming a diehard. Like, we, when the season starts and we start doing post game shows, and then we want to talk about the Cubs more after that, yeah. we'll be in the Discord. Yeah, in the in the Discord channel, what are we calling it? Um, CHGO overtime. CHGO extra innings. Well, we call it extra innings. It's yeah. overtime, but we're we're gonna start calling it CHGO extra innings. Baseball, so, bro. <laughs> if you want to continue to talk about the Cubs after a crazy game, and you you're, you're not satisfied with just the one hour post game that we do. Mm-hmm. You need to become a diehard so you could join in on those extra innings yeah. and keep talking to us about about that that big Cubs win, right? Like exactly. imagine, imagine uh, you know the the Morel walk off game, mm. right? We could have been at the event. You could have been at the event, which is something else you can get twenty mm. percent off with becoming a diehard. Sure, um, but like if we had had we had a, a post game show that night because we had to take over that day instead. Had we had a post game show that night, guarantee it would have been going, going crazy, and then guarantee people would have been hopping in the Discord yeah. to go and keep talking about that win. Absolutely, um, Sarah has it brought up right now. We uh, we announced our takeover. I think when me and you were in Arizona, we announced it, but. We have three takeovers this year. Uh, we got the Crosstown Series with the Sox on June 4th. Um, we're doing a road trip to Milwaukee uh, for the Cubs Brewers on June 29th. And then Yankees uh, come to Wrigley on September 6th. Uh, Anthony Rizzo making his return to beautiful historic Wrigley Field for the first time. Uh, listen, you can, get, you can go to all three of these 20% off. Uh, if you become a diehard. And I'm, I said this yesterday, if you want to see me cry, you got to at least come to the one on September 6th. If, you, if you're in the market to want to see me cry, you got to at least come to that one. Yeah. All right. So I'll get binoculars in the press box just so I can be like, <laughs> be looking out, watching you. Watching the, the thing is, is down. like, I feel like everyone else will be crying too. It won't just be me. Okay. All right. So I, that's how I'm defending myself on that one, but it will be an emotional day. But <laughs> Uh, again, becoming a diehard, you can do all this uh, at a at a cheaper price um, on top of having a ton of fun. Uh, so uh, that said, too, we have we haven't we don't have like the RSVP for it, but our opening day watch party against the Rangers. It's a, it will be at Country Club nice. on March 28th. Um, we will have the link for you guys to be able to RSVP to, to at least that way we have an idea of how many people are coming to it. It'll be at Country Club, I think, 6 p.m. Um, for opening day when the Cubs are on the road against the Rangers. We're going to do a post-game show live at Country Club after. But, of course, we'll be there to watch the game with all the diehards and anyone else who hasn't become a diehard that might want to become a diehard that day too. So a lot of good stuff coming up, man. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about this season and what's to come. Um, uh, real quick, yeah. uh, by the way, because I, I want to make it clear that uh, when we talked about Ben Brown, I said I don't. The plan isn't necessarily to make him a reliever. Like I do, like they still want to build him up as a starter, want him starting games in Iowa, whatever. But like you said, like things do happen, injuries happen, whatever. And so I did ask him, like, just I asked him kind of about that, and he was kind of the mindset. Of, mm-hmm. Same thing as a lot of these guys are. It's like whatever I need to do to help the Cubs win. If they ask him to go to the bullpen be a, a long reliever guy or something like that. Like, that's definitely something that he's not opposed to. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the Cubs would shy away from that either. Yeah. Um, but I, the plan for now is still to continue building him up, starting him, um, and seeing – kind of seeing where things go, I think. I, I don't think there's any necessarily plans to move him into a bullpen role or uh, 
uh, Swiss Army knife role, but I, I, I don't, I don't, I do think that they feel he can do that. So if if a need arises, um, for sure I could see that being an option that they may want to, a route that they may want to go down yeah. with Ben Brown if needed. I I just feel like it makes it easier for them to get him on the roster. I guess like again, I'd rather see him at, be a starter. I just they have a lot of depth there, you know, and I, it's a good thing. And again, injuries happen, so yeah, I, well, that's, that's what. So that's, that's what I'm saying is like, if if they can keep if if their bullpen is performing well enough, um, injuries aren't taking their toll on them. They got a lot of you know other bullpen options as well. Mm-hmm. Like it could still make sense just to keep him in AAA on a starter schedule to maintain that starting pitching depth. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see it all play out starting in 15 days, right? Starting in 15 um, days. Yeah, 15 days away from opening day, guys. Barb, we will be back here tomorrow at 3.30. I believe we're going to finally play our last interview that you got in Arizona. We do. Um, should, should we tease it? Yeah, are we, we going to tease it or are we going to tell who it is? Yeah, we might have, yeah, we'll, we don't have to tease it anymore. We'll, we'll keep it coming. We kind of teased yeah. it yesterday, but I guess we can just go ahead and say it. Yeah, so uh, Hayden Wisniewski, obviously a guy we've talked about a good amount on this show yeah. um, when it was just a battle for one starting position, starting pitching position, but now – uh, we got another one with Tyone's injury, and, and depending how long he misses, um, so he's he's firmly in that competition, and he's a great talker. Um, but yeah, a solid interview with Hayden Wisniewski coming out uh, tomorrow. A little reflecting on his 2023 and just kind of what led to some of those issues we saw mm-hmm. that we didn't necess- obviously we didn't see in 2022 when he made his debut. Um, so just what he kind of reflected on going or coming out of 2023 what he's looking forward to uh in 2024 um a bunch of other good stuff in there and also if you care his thoughts on the justin fields versus Ooh. number one pick caleb williams whole situation well, so, Ju- justin Steele was pro keep fields pro keep fields and build around him so yeah so we'll, we'll see, see what, what hayden says we'll see what hayden was next he's says. a texans fan right he's he a texas fan said? he right. he's a texans fan and he did just get what looks to be uh, his team's franchise quarterback last season. Mm-hmm. So does that sway him in any one way? We'll find out. Yeah. All right. Uh, again, hit the like button on your way out. I, this is a low total of likes for this show, in my opinion. Um, we'll be back here, though, tomorrow, 3.30. Hayden Wisniewski, talk to Ryan at spring training. We'll play that. Hopefully we have some perhaps more updates on certain guys. Maybe we'll get some roster cuts that we can talk about. Um, yeah, I mean, again, 15 days until opening day, so we're just we're, we're cutting the roster down. And who knows, maybe Montgomery and Snell will sign tomorrow. I would love for one of them to choose a team or yeah. someone to just say screw it and pay them so we can stop talking <laughs> about it. Um, yeah. And uh, – Barb, I'm not going to call Ryan Poles and tell him to trade Justin Fields. He doesn't have that pull. I don't have that pull. All right. So, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Barb. Anyway, we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for checking out the CHGO Cubs podcast. Fly a W. We all silly like the mayor. 